Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where I've had a really productive um, Dyson Sphere program uh, stream recently. And that's me, as you can see from this uh, belt running along here, we're now making the um, the, the the little rocket things that take the uh, take the Dyson, Swar Dyson Sphere chunks up into space. And if we look over here, you can see the um, all the rocket silos that I've now placed down are launching away merrily. So that's going really well. I, mean, I feel like I've made some huge progress in, in the last stream um, because, well, now as you see, we are we are launching rockets, and that has been the the big push I've been going for for the last at least last couple of episodes. If we have a look out in space, yep, you can see them all flying off. They're going out into into in, into space, flying out to my Dyson sphere over here. Which, ooh, if I just actually let's let's center on the um, there we go, center on here. I can have a look at it, and you can see now I've I've put in quite a lot more extra sections of it. So we've got um, lots of rocket. The rockets have lots and lots of places to fly out and dock, and we're building up massive areas of. Um, of solar panel around around the um, around each one of these nodes that's building up, and this is going really really well. As you can see, we've got a big chunk built here. This section over here is basically finished, which, although um, we're still there's still bits around the around the sides filling up, but we've, we've filled in this gap in the middle. The um, it's yeah, it's going really really well. You can see the huge swarms of uh, of solar sails flying out from the Dyson swarm to join onto the on, onto the onto the shell, and down here. You can see that again. Once again, there's a, a huge number of of the solar sails flying out to become part of the swarm, and this is this is absolutely fantastic because it means for, now we've finally got to the point where we've got more than 100% satisfaction. Now it says 100% satisfaction because it it doesn't understand going up to even higher numbers than that. Um, but as you can see by this, this this orange bar in the middle is the amount of power that's actually being used. This pale blue bar that comes out to here is the amount that's being generated by the Dyson swarm, and then this little darker blue patch up here is how much is being generated by the shell. So I reckon that's about 55, 60% at most uh, of the of the power that we're generating is currently being used. So yeah, which is going absolutely brilliantly. Which is why I've now got so many of the solar sails being added to the uh, to the Dyson shell because I thought, well, at the moment we've got so much power coming in. I don't need all. I don't need to be building up the uh, the Dyson swarm to generate the power in quite the same way. I can sacrifice lots and lots of the um, of the sails to go into the in, into the sh shell instead. So if you look at this, you can see I, I, the last basically the last thing I did at the end of the last stream was build up lot was plan out lots lots more of the um, of, of the shell out here. So we've now got two two rows going about what's that about three quarters of the way around? Yeah, about three almost three quarters of the way around the sun, going out to, a, to I think this is 15 degrees, but I'm not sure. So both both ways so that's 30 degrees out of 180 so when this finishes we'll be about a sixth of the way there <laughs> and when i put it like that it doesn't actually sound like all that much but i guess this is the the most difficult 60 percent because this is going around the equator so it's a much larger area when i'm putting a little bit in around the top it's going to require a lot fewer bits and pieces in order to get that built up so yes, this is going really, really well. I think I'm um, I'm very happy with this. You can see from from last uh, last week we had that mass that horrible shortage of um, of solar sails going out. But I, but one of the things I'm going to be talking about this week is how I've managed to boost this up. So instead of instead of sending up what 480 something um, per whatever these time periods are, I got it up to abs all the way up to 2300 at its peak. Now granted, it's dropped down quite a long way here, but that's because huge numbers of them are pouring back out of the, the swarm to go and, and start building up the shell. So I'd say this is going really, really well. I made, I think I've made some fantastic progress and um, it's, yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. So how did I do that, I hear you ask? Well, the first thing I did was head off to another planet, um, another so so star system in fact, and let's see if I can find it. It was was it this one? Is it Al Suhail? Yes, I think it was. Yes, this one. So we need to go out. We need to go out here. View that one. And out this planet. Uh, where is it? Kyber out here. Which I came out here to get crystals in order to do um, all various various shenanigans with uh, with, with so making solar cells a bit more efficiently. So I'm going to head out there, and this is going to take a little while because this is two and a half light years away. But if I fly out there now. Um, then we, we can have a look at what's going on out, out, out there. And I think I talked about this a little bit uh, last week, but here, here we go, this is where I wanted to be. Last week I was talking about how I had a massive shortage of the photon combiners, because there's this recipe here that turns two prisms and a green circuit into a photon combiner. Great. But two prisms takes three glass, which takes six stone, and I had a massive shortage of stone on, on, on the bus system over there. Fortunately, there's a second recipe for making photon combiners, and that's this one. And for this one, you take in two of these purple crystal things, which are called uh, optical grating crystals, and again, a green circuit, but sure, who cares. Uh, bring in a load of those, 
And so those are things you can dig up on, on planets off in other systems. So there's a few of them around. I had, a bit, I had to do a bit of searching for these, actually, because looking at the, at the various different um, suns that are in, uh, in range, the Targaryen doesn't have any uh, optical grating crystals. What's this one? Pre Precipua, no optical grating. Oh, no, no optical grating crystals. This one, uh, Kalidus, that's, that's where I started. No optical grating crystals. It turned out there was only really one. There was this one, Al Alsuhail. No, let's try and pick the sun. There we go. Um, and this had six and a half million of them, which is pretty good. So I thought, okay, well, let's go out, go and have a look out there. And I found this planet, which we've called Kyber, um, because we're all a massive bunch of nerds. And um, Kyber crystals are what you use to make a lightsaber. So we thought, I'm going out there, getting optical crystals, let's call the planet Kyber. It seems to make sense. And there's six and a half million on here, and it's going down slowly as we mine them up. But six and a half million, that's lots. So we're digging that up. I picked a, deliberately picked a point on the planet where there's two of them quite close by, quite close together. And then we're just feeding all of these straight into this tower here. As you can see, it's got to the point where the tower is full. Um, but we've got the t we've got eight out of our ten uh, logistics vessels in here. I think we'll just come back to you. We're up to nine now. We've got a load of the um, of the space warpers so the ships can go beyond light speed in order to get it, bring the uh, crystals back nice and quickly. And so, as we need them, the ships will launch from here, and they'll take they'll take a stack of um, however many it is I transport these days um, over to the other planet. That should be at 100%. It doesn't matter here, but it should always be at 100%. So yeah, we're digging these up here. This is this is working very nicely. There's other stuff on this planet as well. So we've got fire ice and titanium and copper and some iron over there. So this potentially could be a useful planet to set up some other resource systems on. Um, I've also set up my normal solar panels over here. This is what we call the polar solar system because it's a cluster of solar panels all around the pole which makes absolutely no sense in the real world but in this game works really really well. So I've got one of those on each pole so even as the planet rocks back and forth in its orbit we should always have a decent amount of power. And if we look at the, uh, the, the, the graph down here you can see that we're generating 39 megawatts here and we're using 6. So yeah, we've got crazy am amounts more power than we need. These little blips here, I suspect, are each time a uh, one of the uh, logistics vessels arrives, it takes a load of power to charge it up, and then we run the mining drills for a little while to, to dig up a little bit more um, of the of, of the crystals. Um, but as you can see, even if I look back a long way, okay, there's a massive, massive spike at the beginning of probably charging the tower up in the first instance. But basically, we've got plenty of power here. I've gone seriously over the top on that. So that's working really nicely. That's making up these optical grating crystals, and I'm then transporting them back off somewhere, and I'm trying to remember where that is, so let's go and try and work it out. I've flown back to Norvis, but now, in hindsight, I don't think it actually is here where I'm making the um, making the the uh, lenses. I think it's actually off on Scilly, so can I spot Scilly up in the sky? There's Titan. The, um, the trail of blue things flying away from it is potentially a bit of a giveaway. So now, maybe if I touch down on Sid, we'll see, we'll, see, we'll see what we find here. So, we are still mining up massive quantities of titanium here, and that's doing really well. We've got um, four and a half thousand in there. Uh, this is apparently a small logistic station. That's slightly weird. I guess we're stockpiling it here and then shipping it over to the other state, other, other logistic station to ship it out to where it's needed. So here, yes. Oh, okay, now, oh, whoop. Right, yes, here we go. So over here, we are shipping in all of the uh, all of those uh, photon. No, no, we're not. We're shipping in all of those crystals I was just talking about. We're also bringing in um, circuit boards, and we're trying to bring in paint, but apparently we've run out of that. So that's going to be something to look into next time. And we're also uh, bringing in, and, and then we're making the photon combiners and shipping them out. So over here, we've got the sort of pretty much the standard system that you you'll, you've seen a million times before from my, my build, where you've got um, belts coming out, going through a painter which has run out of paint, but ignoring that fact for now, um, it then flows all the way around here, makes up makes the photon combiners, uh, and then there's a second belt flowing all the way around here to bring them back in again. Uh, sorry, there's. No, there's the okay. There's the two belts flowing at the middle, and then there's another pair of belts flowing around the outside and going back into the uh, into the tower here to bring those in. Because I think I might, I think I need, I do need a few of these elsewhere. So we are, we're able to, um, we're bringing them in here by on the belt, shipping them out on the belt as well, and but we're also able to take them away by um, by logistics vessel if we need to as well. Um, the, the 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 green circuits are also being made on another planet somewhere. I forget exactly where. Um, it, would, it makes sense if it was here because we've got loads of silicon, but I have a feeling it's not. Um, it's got to the point where I'm starting to lose track of where I'm doing a lot of my builds, uh, which is a problem. But well, at least maybe a problem, but so far hasn't been too serious. 
So, yes, we're then bringing those over into here, uh, somewhere somewhere else to store them as, as, as necessary. Uh, we're bringing in the, the bucky sheets, for, and these are coming in from another planet, and I shall touch on those a bit more in a Actually, no, those are being brought in from Targaryen, where they're being made in absolutely huge quantities. And then we can feed both of those out along here. Again, we would be painting them if we um, hadn't, you know, run out of paint. But they're fed along here through loads of these machines. I've put in quite a lot of extra ones, as you can see. So we're, we're stacking up all of the uh, the photon combiners and the bucky sheets as they come out. So we've got them. They're only double stacked coming along here, but still, that's that's still quite uh, quite valuable. And they're then brought out here where we are. Um, we're bringing out the the, um, the the solar sails. They're being stacked as much as possible, and then coming through here through these uh, through this sorry through these stackers. So in theory, they're coming out quad stacked. Uh, that's not actually happening. But in theory, they would be being quad stacked. Um, it just seems like we don't quite have enough throughput here. But we're doing what we can. And now, the, the expansion I've done here. So this is the original um, array of guns I had that was launching out the uh, the solar solar arrays, uh, solar sails, sorry. And then over here, I've built out a mo the, the second ge second generation of it. And as you can see, there's rather a lot more guns around here. This is, this is as close as you can pack them on a single belt. Uh, along a single belt like this, uh, they, you can't, you literally can't put them in any closer together than this because they need room to swing the barrel, gun barrels around. And also, um, this is conveniently you can just about squeeze a uh, pylon in between them as well, which is rather nice. And as you can tell by the fact that this belt is not running constantly, this because it's stacked every so often when 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 these do load up, most of the time they'll get four. Okay, sometimes they'll only get two or maybe even one, but most of the time when they load up from this, they'll grab four at a time, and that will, that keeps the gun satiated for a little while. And that means the whole system is kept running just by that one single belt. And so with we've got this going all the way around the planet. You can look at look at that fire rate. That is phenomenal. And you can you can see why there's just so many of the uh, the solar cells flying out now. Why I had so many of them. That's just, that's going absolutely fantastically. I'm, I'm I really like this. This is this is this is absolutely brilliant. Um, and how are we doing for power out here? That's the other question. So we've got 307 megawatts capacity, and we're using 235 of it. So actually, this is this is also going really well. Even though I've got all of these guns working working away as fast as they can, we're still launch we're launching huge numbers of solar sails. But it's but the system is still happy. So yes, I'm really happy with this. This is going very very well, and this is how I'm managing to get this enormous stream of solar sails coming out from the from the swarm without actually damaging the amount of the the number of uh, solar sails in the swarm. So yeah, I mean you can see along here it's running at about <clears throat> call that 50%. Is it's doing about where the numbers there? So it's going about 1,200 out of the 2,300. So it's like just over 50% of the of the maximum rate. So I think. This is this is okay at the moment, especially as this number here, the amount that's being produced from the Dyson shell, is gradually growing. So, even even though we might be losing the amount of power in the shell, sorry, in the swarm, the shell is growing uh, to the point where eventually there'll be enough power coming from the shell that we don't need to worry about the swarm anymore, and we just pull these things out as fast as we can and put to put them in, into the shell. And the nice thing about having the solar sails in the shell as opposed to in the swarm is they don't expire, they don't run out. So across here we've got this 9,000 seconds where for, um, lifetime for each um, e each solar sail that goes up. And that's for the ones in the swarm, as I say. But the ones that are put into the shell, they only produce half as much power, which is why it was a little bit iffy at first when I started to build it up. But... But now that I've got like 100, now that I've got 280, 180 percent of power available, it's fine. Um, but especially as they then will, will no longer expire. So at some point in the future, we'll get to the point where we've got we've got more power available than if I was just putting them into the um, than if I was just putting them into the swarm. So yes, that's going very very well. We're launching them at a massive rate. This is this is absolutely fantastic. So yes, things that things are going really well. There's been a number of things I've had to um, have had to give a bit of a prod to. So let's head back over to Norvis and take a look at those. Let's play a quick game of where am I? I mean, obviously I'm up somewhere over Norvis, but I can't tell where the pla where the particular piece of the bit of the planet that I want to land on is. Oh, it's down here. Yes, I am in basically the right place. So we can come in, touch down here. So this is back back where it all started for this episode. So over here, yes, we've got the, the standard setup. As it, I've, I've shown you, I've shown you this before. We're bringing in, we're bringing in coal to make carbon, to, and we're bringing in iron ore to make uh, magnets in order to make these um, blue tube, blue, blue funny businesses. And then we're ah, this and this, this is the problem. So at the moment, we don't have enough deuterium. 
So, we, as you can see, the massive, massive shortages of deuterium. Everything else completely full, deuterium almost completely empty. As soon as it arrives, it floods straight out down this belt here. Yeah, we, we're stacking it up to four high, which is nice, it's great. Um, oh, and as you may, may see here, I've started making blue belts as well to, to help with these sort of things, which is, again, nice to have. Um, but then we've, we just don't have enough deuterium flowing out down here. Oh, oh look, we've, we've run out again. Oh, there's, there's a bit more coming out. But it's, it's being made, but not quite as fast as I want it to be. So yes, over here, um, we have we have an area where we are bringing in hydrogen here from the um, from space. We've got loads of we actually got loads of hydrogen. There's no no shortage of that at all, um, and it's being then processed into deuterium along here. And so I've made some changes to this and made some absolutely horrific spaghetti in this area. I mean, well, firstly, let's let's look at let's look at this. I'm not, I'm not even going to try and explain it because it's just too horrible. But yeah, there's lots and lots of belts snaking in and out of each other all over the place here. So it's amazing what spaghetti you can make when you have a third dimension to play with. So the idea of this is that here we have our tower that has various out, various um, amount, large quantities of hydrogen stored in it, and this is being fed out through certainly out through this belt here. And I think through another, yes, another belt over here. And these are both supposed to be quad stacked. So, yeah, we've got these four, four high stacks coming along here, here, and here. And those being fed out then down here through the uh, through all of these um, fractionate, fractionate, uh, fraction, fra fractional distillation towers. And that's producing lots and lots of the, um, of the deuterium. So there's quite a bit of that flowing out. Um, and I did originally have this belt then flowing back from there into this splitter here, which I can't get to, into this splitter, at high up, which is why this belt goes up, across, and then down. Um, so yeah, it was, was flowing in here in order to get past round and round and round and round. But it occurred to me that that's actually not so useful because the um, the hydrogen coming along here is now is no longer quad stacked. If I get the camera down near it, you can see that it's, it's kind of hard to tell exactly how high that stack. That looks like ones and twos to me. Whatever it is, it's no longer have it doesn't it's no longer stacked quite as high. So I decided this was a bad idea. So we've got this just feeding around here and then straight back into the tower over here. So this the, it all just flows straight back in there and then that means we can flow back out of the tower again. Back out of the tower again and be made into and then be quad stacked up and then we're sending the full maximum amount through here. Because the way these things work, the more of it you feed through on the belt that goes through them, the more deuterium they create. So you want to have this going through as fast as possible and as much of it as possible. So it's quad stacked on blue belts. We've just got huge, crazy amounts of it pouring through. And that means we're getting quite a lot of deuterium coming out here. So yeah, this is this is going well. One of the other things I put in was I got a little bit worried that because this is bringing in hydrogen from from the uh, gas giant and bringing it in from the um, from, from the uh, oil processing over here as well, although that hard barely counts. Um, I was a bit worried that this might fill up and we wouldn't and we get to the point where we weren't able to flow any more hydrogen in and this belt would jam up. Now that's quite unlikely because the stuff coming in from a belt is prioritized but just in case I put in this splitter here with the priorities going off that way into the tower but in case of emergencies it can dump out into this storage tank here um, which will fill up and fill up and fill up and then we'll unload back out this way where it'll be stacked up again and it'll go back round so in theory if we ever do get a blockage it'll overflow into here but then this will get prior used as a priority because as you can see we've pri prioritized the bottom in, 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 in bottom um, input on this splitter and then we'll use that as a priority get that back and get it back out onto the system so in theory it won't it won't clog up in here it'll just pour a bit into here as an emergency overflow and then it'll flow back out again as soon as it's able to and well we haven't really seen that happen but in theory i think it should probably work quite well we'll um, uh, hopefully we'll never actually find out and, and things will just carry on working but we shall see so yes flood of deuterium coming out filling up I say trying to it's trying very very hard to fill up this tower over here but it's just getting taken away as fast as it's being made in order to go into that rocket production so even this system with I don't know how many um, distillation columns we've got out here this is not enough I probably need to have all of this again in order to try and generate twice as much and then maybe that'll be enough and in fact I think it probably will be because having looked at the belts over by in the in the uh, rocket production area uh, which actually now I know I uh, work, now I've worked out where I am it's literally just over here we're, we were, I was really close to it before when I was when I was getting lost and trying to find it if we look at this belt down here um, thank you uh, then we can see that this is mostly I mean it's flowing fairly 
solidly um, most of the time, and then at event every so often it just has a bit of there's a bit of a gap in there, like that. But if we, I reckon, if we doubled the amount of it that was available, yeah, we'd have, we'd easily fill up that gap. So I think having twice, potentially pulling in twice as much would be enough. Now the the other the other part of that question is, would twice as much be enough to come all the way down here? And I think it might. I think it. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure. We would have to see. But what one thing I could potentially do, if it turns out not to be enough, is I could have another output of the deuterium from this tower coming out here or here or, or wherever stack that up to another quad stack and feed it down here and add it in just somewhere down here it, it, it kind of doesn't matter where as long as we manage to increase the amount of amount, amount of throughput we've got coming coming along here um, yeah so it's it's working as, as you saw we're getting we're getting a decent rate of rocket launches over there but I would always like it to be going a bit faster if I can that would be nice Otherwise, I feel like things are going really well. So, for example, looking here, we've got this. This is not you. Um, there's green science available. Where, where's the green science? Oh, green science there, coming from over here. So this is basically full of green science packs, and green science is presumably the you'd you'd expect green science to be the one that runs out first because it's the most expensive, therefore most difficult, the most resource hungry. Um, so I would expect that one to be the one that runs out first, but you can never be quite sure. So let's have a look over here where the actual science is happening, and let's see how these towers are holding up. So over here we've got well we've got, we've got as much blue science as we're asking for, even though we're not asking for a full thing. Let's let's whack that up to full because because why not? Um, then here. Again, we've got yep, we've got full red, full yellow, full purple. So we seem to have all of the science packs we could possibly wish for over there, and that's a good thing because if we look in in here in the in the um, the upgrade in the upgrades, um, eventually I shall be researching the universe matrix, which is the white science packs, and making those requires one of every other science pack. Um, so those are going to be a little bit pricey, but I think when you start using them, yes, then when you start using them, the research only only takes the whites. So. Actually, maybe it's not going to be that bad. We'll be able to—I'll be able to churn through the um, the research fairly well. I'll be able to—I'll be able to do the research. It's only going to take, when it says four thousand white. That means four thousand of each of the others. It's not four thousand white and four thousand blue, four thousand red, red, yellow, purple, green. So whilst it is going to require an extra step, and it's going to require—I think that's probably antimatter. Um, It's—it's it's not going—it's not quite as bad as it looks because you no longer need the um, the more basic science packs, apart from to you know make the white science in the first place. So yeah, that's going. I think things are going really, really well. The deuterium is a bit of a shortage at the moment. I'm churning through res doing research as, as much as possible. So I've got vein utilization. That's my essentially what what I, what I would normally call mining productivity. You've got that one being researched. And then I thought I might as well do the research speed researches. I don't feel like I'm short of research speed. And to be honest, if I did want to research faster, then I could just come in over here and put in another couple of these towers. And then that would double the research speed because that's how maths works. Um, my actually concern with this, if I increase the research speed, I don't know if these inserters are going to be able to keep up because I've been kind of lazy with the inserters. I've only ever gone as far as the uh, the second the tier two, um, okay, sorters, um, because I didn't feel like I needed anything more than that. These have just generally always been fast enough. But then the sort of the Mark threes, the blue sorters, yeah, okay, they 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 require the uh, the electromagnetic turbines, but I do have those in quantity now, so I could start using those. I just haven't needed to. These have been fast enough so far. But these ones are the stack inserters. So I mean, it's like these are these are like Factorio's yellow inserters. They're the the early game ones. They're a bit crap. These are basically the blue inserters from Factorio. They are a lot faster than these ones, and generally they're pretty good. These are the green inserters, the stack inserters, the ones that can that can carry multiple things at a time. So you'll see in here it says stacking one, stacking one, stacking two. And there are researches to increase that further. So these would be a massive, massive upgrade. I just haven't needed them yet. The uh, the Mark IIs are, have been fast enough. And they, um, how fast do they go? Three trips per grid, okay. three trips per second per group. That three grids per second would probably be a better way of putting that. These are six, so they're twice as fast. These are, uh, okay, so it's one, two, four, it's a bit, or one and a half, three, uh, three, six, but you know, twice as fast, four times as fast. Um, so yeah, they're they're a lot quicker. Sure, I mean that seems like a good upgrade. I just, as I say, haven't actually needed it yet. Um, one of the things I have noticed because I did do, I did decide for over here um, and a few other places besides. 
Um, where was it? I, there has been a few places where oh yeah, it was over here uh, where I've decided the blue belts are actually useful, and those are the those are the really fast belts. And if, we land, if I land over here, you can see, you can see how fast they go. I mean, these are almost ridiculously fast. They're so fast I can't even tell how how stacked things are on the belts. I can barely tell what's which is which. If I didn't know, I, I wouldn't know whether this was the hydrogen and this is the deuterium or the other way around because they're just flying past my eyes so fast. But I thought I might as well have those because I kind of. It was kind of needed for this. I can still hear the fractionating columns. That's a really weird noise. I'm going to move over here out of the way. Uh, and then and then switch over to map view. Uh, touchdown. There we go. If I look over... Where is my bus? Here it is. Yeah, if I, if I look down here... Uh, we've got the yellow yellow belts being made, then the green belts, and then I've got a, a belt over here that's carrying the green belts away to over here, which is the nearest place where I could find to actually do some stuff. And so over here we're making making the um, the the blue belts, and I was able to pull in the um, what are these what are these things called? They're super magnetic rings apparently, and the bucky sheets because that's what you need in order to make the uh, the tier three belts. And they're being made over here, shoved in a box, in exactly the same way everything else is. So now I can potentially use these whenever I need something that will just run that, that little bit faster. I think that's everything I've done. Um, the main achievement is, as I was saying, that I'm now building up the um, the Dyson the, the Dyson shell. I, which way do I rotate the map? Ma that way. The Dyson shell, over here. Building this up much faster than I was before. That's going. That's going fantastically. I've solved nearly all of the um, of the supply issues at the moment. The only thing that I seem to have problems with, um, at least that I've noticed having problems with, is deuterium. Now, so I think the next thing to do is going to be perhaps put some more mining in on um, on the gas giant. In fact, let's go up. Can I can I go up and have a look at that? Where is it? Let's. Um... I was hoping to just take off and then be able to go and then be able to go. Oh, there it is! There it is! Like yeah, sort of like like this. You just fly straight over to it. So let's go and have a look at how much hydrogen we've actually got over here. Whether I'm um, ha whether I'm remotely running short of it or not. Um, please fly along the equator. So somewhere on this planet, I have uh, a number of. A uh, number of towers that are extracting the hydrogen and and a bit of deuterium from the gas giant, and then are making it available to be shipped off for um, for further rocketry rocketry purposes, should we say? Um, they're kind of hard to find. Let's use the map view. There they are, blooming miles away. Right. So these things, and they're yeah okay. They are looking at them. They are mostly about sort of half a third. Oh, this one's completely full. Alright, it looks like, I take it back, I was going to say it looks like we're not producing it fast enough. It looks like we are producing it fast enough. So I probably don't need to do any additional build-up of these of these systems. I can just go back over onto Norvis and massively increase the amount of um, uh, the amount of processing I've got over there. Or maybe I'll do it on a different planet, because Norvis, if we're being honest, Norvis is getting kind of full at this point. I've put so much stuff, I've built up on it so much that there's not really enough room to build... I feel like I feel like there's not really enough room to build more stuff, much more stuff on there, and the um, and the fractionating columns do take up quite a lot of space. So I think probably, well, let's have let's have a quick look. Let's lamp, see what I mean. It's, it's it's a kind kind of a full planet at the moment. But if I have a look, then I mean there's a bit of space here, but that's mostly taken up by solar. Granted, I don't really need that solar anymore. There's there's a patch of space down here. But the fractionating area is kind of huge, so I think I would like to... Oh, wait, down here is a possibility. There's, it's not very straight, though. I don't know. I think probably I'll just go off to another planet and set it up on, on there. Um, I do need to do more paint production, actually. That's that's the thing as well. So, yeah, we'll have... Um, we'll go off to another planet. Well, uh, actually, I'll do, do a load more paint production on this planet because um, I've got all the, all the coal is on this planet. And you see, we're, we're producing the paint at... <clears throat> at a rate, an, ins an insufficient rate, but a, a rate nonetheless. So I'll need to boost that up by building a massive, another massive paint factory somewhere. And then I'll go off to one of the other planets, one where there's plenty of space, and just pull all of the hydrogen over there, turn it into deuterium, and ship it back. So then hopefully we can start launching the rockets even more quickly. At that point, I think the big thrust is going to be research. So uh, this is the upgrades. I've done many, many of these. Uh, the re I'm really only going through these research speed ones down here because I thought I might as well. There's not much else. Th there's not much else left that I can do that's actually useful. Um, however, on the technology side, there's quite a lot of stuff over here that I haven't really played with yet. So 
I'm going to need to extend the Dyson uh, Sphere stress system so I can make this, the sphere bigger. Because uh, I do want to make an entire sphere before I finish. I'm going to need to do... And I just want to sort of pick off all of the remaining researches and get over here and then eventually get this one. Um, it's only 4,000 white science. That doesn't seem like that much. Um, yeah, I, maybe, maybe I only have to do this research. We, we, we shall see. But I will at some point need to make anti need to discover how to make antimatter, which might be this one. Um, yes, there we go. Yeah, it makes an antimatter and hydrogen apparently out of. I don't even know what those sparky things at the bottom are that I'm make, supposed to be making it out of. But we'll find out. That'll be the, that's the, going to be the exciting thing to do probably next week. So come back on Wednesday. Uh, that'll be uh, for the next stream. I shall be uh, working working towards making antimatter and white science and seeing how that goes. Plus, of course, the paint and the uh, and the deuterium as, as as previously discussed. Come back come along on on Monday when we shall be playing Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. At the moment, we are um, we've just we've just developed the first two of the sort of the the pseudo space sciences before all the all the tiered colorful ones but at least working in the in the right sort of direction to get towards those We've got the catch up videos as you're you're you you're fully aware because you're watching one right now these come out at the other uh, weekend so friday and saturday for factorio and sunday for dyson sphere program and there's the uh, and the gta videos are coming out uh, thick and strong at the moment so they seem to be coming out every week on on thursdays and i'll try and squeeze in a couple of extra um uh, Factorio tutorials here and there as, as, I, as, as I have an opportunity to make them and if you want to get access to those uh, a week early make sure you're a channel uh, supporter so that means be a YouTube member a Twitch subscriber or drop in a, a donation on uh, Ko-Fi to, um, to, 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 to yeah, any of those then come along and join the Discord and you can get access to all of the uh, all of the bonus stuff on the channel Finally, uh, if you're not, if, if you haven't already, please check out the channel sponsor. That's Trefoil.be. They will host a server for you for running games such as Factorio or Minecraft or Seven Days to Die, stuff like that. Um, and they they're very very reasonable. And if you use the code Lawrence Plays, you can get 20% off your first month. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll come along to the streams and future videos. I shall see you then. Bye bye.